That's the question of the night. Who did it? Who is the author of the New York Times op-ed piece who the president calls gutless and anonymous and is now demanding that the New York Times must turn over that person to the government? That person has already been turned over to the government by Donald Trump. Donald Trump chose the person who wrote today's op-ed piece that has become the president's obsession. It's one of Donald Trump's best people. We've got the best people. I know the best people. We're going to use our best people. The best people. The best people. I know guys that are so good. And now they're gutless. It's one of them. And it's someone who knows what the cabinet was thinking early on about possibly invoking the 25th Amendment to remove Donald Trump from the presidency. The Times used only the word senior official to describe this person. So a member of the cabinet or someone who is in the room with members of the cabinet all the time, a cabinet level official, the person still works there. So it is not the first sec the secretary of state, Rex Tillerson or H.R. McMaster or Reince Priebus or former economic advisor Gary Cohn, who does appear to be a significant source of Bob Woodward's new book, which is a detailed book length version of the op-ed piece that describes an incompetent, irrational president whose staff is constantly manipulating him and, in the words of the op-ed piece, quote, working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. It's easy to dismiss most of the cabinet right off the bat because most of them have never demonstrated even the slightest disagreement with the president and most of them have never publicly demonstrated the capacity for the kind of thinking about government and how it should work that is demonstrated in this op-ed piece. So it's not Steve Mnuchin or Wilbur Ross or Ben Carson or Rick Perry or Betsy DeVos or Linda McMahon who ran a wrestling business before becoming a senior official in the Trump administration. There is every reason to believe that the author of the piece is an experienced politician who knows the workings of Washington well and knows how to deal with the New York Times at the highest levels. That leaves out almost everyone else. James Mattis, Jeff Sessions, Ryan Zinke, Sonny Perdue, Alex Azar. And so that leaves us with a short list that includes people like Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats, and Ambassadors of the United Nations Nikki Haley. The New York Times did use the word he to describe the author of the piece, but they have since tried to walk the back, back that gender disclosure, saying that it's the, quote, the use of the word he was an error. But there are very few senior officials in the Trump administration who are women, and Nikki Haley works in New York City. She is not in Washington often enough to be accepted by the Times as an authority of what's really going on inside the Trump White House day to day. And Nikki Haley has a future, or at least wants to have a future in Republican politics. So Nikki Haley would never take the chance of destroying her career in Republican politics by being exposed, as this author eventually will be, as the betrayer of Donald Trump inside the Trump administration at the highest level. That brings our guessing game down to Secretary of State and the Director of National Intelligence. The op-ed piece has a heavy emphasis on foreign policy. Take foreign policy in public and in private. President Trump shows a preference for autocrats and dictators such as President Vladimir Putin of Russia and North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un and displays little genuine appreciation for the ties that bind us to allied, like-minded nations. The rest of the administration is operating on another track, one where countries like Russia are called out for meddling and punished accordingly and where allies around the world are engaged as peers rather than ridiculed as rivals. Both Mike Pompeo and Dan Coats have said in no uncertain terms that Russians directed by Vladimir Putin did indeed attack our 2016 election. Dan Coats and Mike Pompeo are both doing what is described.